Hi, I'm Gray with American Powertrain. Today we're going to demonstrate to you how to dial indicate your bell housing. Now you may be wondering, well, why do I have to dial indicate my bell housing? Well, there's two reasons. First of all, newer transmissions, like all the Trimix, use a taper bearing on their input shaft. This taper bearing is very tightly tolerated. It can't take any side pressure from your crank. So when you install your transmission, you want to make sure this thing goes straight into the hole in your crank without interfering with the pilot bearing. The second reason is, if you don't indicate your bell when you're installing a Tremec transmission, your warranty is void. That's because we know that if your bell housing is not centered, it's going to ruin this input shaft bearing. And when that happens, your transmission is going to get noisy. It's going to cause hard shifting. It's cause a lot of problems. So it's not a difficult process. We're going to show you how to do it. And once you're done, your bell housing will be centered forever and your transmission will have good long service without any problems. So we've got our bell housing on, flywheel on. The next step is we're going to set up our dial indicator. So we've got our bell housing on the back of the block. We want to make sure when we put a couple of bolts in it, it's flat to the block. We want to make sure it's touching the block and it's fully bolted up, but you don't have to put all the bolts in. Just put a couple in to hold it up there. And then what we've done is we've stuck our magnetic base dial indicator on the flywheel and we've got the finger of the indicator on the inside of the bore. So we want this finger to touch the bore all the way around. And we're going to set our dial to zero and you can see I've taken a sharpie and marked zero on this bell housing. As we go around, we're going to measure at three, six, nine, and then go back to, to 12 to make sure it's still zero. That'll make sure the dial indicator didn't move. Now we're just using a test block and I have my lovely assistant Paul turning the crank. This is going to be a little more difficult for you. You're going to have to usually throw a, uh, a ratchet on the crank and turn this from the front of the engine. So Paul, go ahead and turn that. And keep going. And whoa. All right, so I'm reading the dial. And the dial indicates that we are plus 20 at 3 o'clock. Now we're going to go to 6. All right, stop there. And that is positive 10. Now we're going to go to 9. All right. Now back up just a little bit. Keep going. All right, whoa. And right there we're at positive 2. Now we're going to take the dial back up to 12. Just to make sure it didn't move, we want to make sure when it gets there it's still at 0. Whoa there. And we're still at zero, so we know our dial didn't move. So that means we got an accurate measurement. Okay, so we've got our numbers now. What do we do with them? Well, we're going to do some simple math to see where this bell housing is sitting relative to the crank. So we're always going to take the small number minus the big number, and we're going to look at the 12, 6 axis and the 3, 9 axis. So if we take the small number, 0, and subtract positive 10, we got negative 10. And if we take positive 2 minus positive 20, we've got a negative 18. So in essence, what we know now is that the center of this hole is 18 thousandths off in this direction, 10 thousandths off in this direction, which means we're off in about this direction here. So what do we do about that? Well, if the bell housing is sitting off in that direction, we want to use something called an offset dowel pin to move it back up in this direction. And that's going to center this hole on your crank. So what I've got here is a set of Lakewood dowel pins. And these are offset dowel pins. They're made by Moroso as well. You can get them from us. You can get them from Summit, what have you. And the way these work, this is actually looks like somebody cut a pencil in half and glued it back cockeyed. So the top half is actually not even with the bottom half. So 
These you can see are seven thousandths offset. They're available in seven, fourteen, and twenty-one, and they will give a total of fourteen thousandths of correction. So seven does fourteen, fourteen, twenty-eight, etc. So we're going to use these in the block to move the bell housing relative to the crank. Before you put your dowel pins in, you want to set them on a nice flat surface and look at them real carefully and they've got a high side. And you want to take your Sharpie and just put a little mark at the high point. That way you know exactly where that 7,000 is. When you put them in the block, you're going to aim these things so that the high side is in the direction you want to go. So once you've marked your high side, you can put them in the block and redial indicate your bell housing and make sure that you're right. All right, so we're ready to finish up. We've put our offset dowel pins in the block. We've remounted the bell housing and re-indicated the bell. We went through the same process we went through earlier. And what we've done is move the bell housing in this direction to correct for the fact that the bell housing was off the center of the crank. So you can see we now have 0, negative 2, positive 4, and positive 1. If we do our math, we're going to take negative 2 minus positive 1, which is going to be negative 3. And we're going to take 0 minus 4, which is negative 4. The tolerance for our TKO transmission is 5 thousandths. So we have 3 and 4 thousandths of variance on this bell housing, which is within the operating tolerance of the input shaft. Now we can go ahead and install our transmission. It'll perform well, it'll stay quiet, it'll shift nicely. We don't have to worry about this ever again.